go to bed. <laughs> I'm only joking. Here are some of the best ways that you can create a living proof routine of autism and sleep in a good way so that you don't kind of miss out on loads of sleep if you're on the autism spectrum. I'm gonna get into all now. Let's go. Guys, welcome back to the Aspie World. My name is Dan, I have autism, ADHD, and I make videos on this every single week. So if you wanna help me out and not miss out on a video, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below by clicking the notification bell. That'd be super, super dope. Also, if you haven't downloaded my Autism Life Hacks PDF book completely free, you can do from autismhacks.net, the link is down below. You guys are awesome. Okay, so I have done a lot of videos on like tips and tricks and hacks and short-term hacks for things to improve sleep quality in the short term. But what about the long term, right? Because sleep is an overall long game. We have to do sleep every single day. You know, we spend half our time sleeping, half our time awake. So it's just as important as being awake. So how do we do this? Now I did a video not so long ago about autism and ADHD sleep uh, kind of hacks and stuff like that. But now I'm going to share with you seven most important ones, I think specifically for people on the autism spectrum. This will also help you out if you have ADHD too. But this is talking about autism specifically in general, and I think that you guys are gonna take a lot away from this. Okay, so let's get into it right now. The first one here is establishing a consistent sleep routine. That means going to bed and waking up at the same time every single day to create a natural sleep-wake cycle is what the actual term is. So you go to bed at one time, you wake up at one time. If you stick to that every single day, and I mean it every single day, all weekends, everything, holidays, whatever, what you'll do is create more of a sleep-wake cycle that your body's comfortable with and it'll help boost your immune system as well. This kind of stuff is pretty dope. And, you know, when I was doing this consistently, I had way better results than just trying short-term hacks or an irregular sleep pattern because I was traveling or whatever. Definitely worth doing. Okay, so number two is creating a relaxing bedtime routine. And, and what I mean by this is you could be someone who wants to just chill out with a cup of, you know, mint tea or, or, or something, you know, candlelight, go for a, a bath or a shower, listen to a calming music before bed, kind of give your body signs that you are wanting to calm down, you are wanting to get relaxed. And by doing this, you get yourself into a rhythmic pattern to thinking, okay, I'm calming down now. The day is winding down. I don't want to be excited. I, there's no need to jump around. I don't need to do any work. Everything's taken care of. Let's go to sleep. This is the kind of idea of it. And it worked really, really well. I was having a difficult time learning how to switch off from going to work and then be at home with my family and then go to bed. But then my partner, she said, well, why don't we just like light candles, dim the lights. We'll put something calming on television, something fun to watch. And we did this and it totally changed the game for us. It was absolutely amazing. So I highly recommend doing this. Okay, so number three is limiting screen time. So there's this thing called blue light effect. Now, when you are on your phone, when you are on an iPad or a television or something, you give off blue light. Now, blue light actually is uh, a way to disrupt the body's way of producing, producing melatonin, or the hormone that helps you actually regulate sleep. Um, and so if you're looking at an iPad or your phone, and then you turn off, go to bed straight away. This is gonna keep you awake longer because the blue light is actually still impacting your body and you haven't had time to produce melatonin and yada yada, and it's not going well. So probably about an hour before you go to sleep, just don't look at any of those devices, turn them off. Don't set anything, you know, if you have to look at them, just look at them quickly or use the night shift function on your phone, which changes the light from blue light to a kind of sepia kind of light. It basically allows your, um, your iPad or your, your your computer or your iPhone to change the, the lighting so it's less harsh in your eyes and it's it's not blue light anymore. Those things will help, but I do suggest avoiding it completely. But if you are gonna use it, like I have a sleep tracker on, so I have to turn the sleep tracker on before I go to bed, but I have the night shift mode on so that it's actually less impacting on me than the blue light would be. Okay, so number four is creating a comfortable sleeping environment. This means that everything in that room is designed for you to go to sleep only. It's your relaxation place. It's nice comfy blankets, good ambient temperature, soft lighting, maybe nice scents in there, some essential oils. Um, you know, it's not too dark, not too light. It's definitely comfy. It's set up to relax. Don't have like crazy artwork that's gonna get you stimulated or engaged. Don't put a TV on the wall. Don't have um, music blaring out like rock music that's gonna get you pumped for the day when you're trying to go to sleep. Those things don't work. You know, there's a reason why we don't do like, you know, jumping jacks for going to bed because we don't want to build energy. We want to kind of just reduce it enough so we can go to sleep. Super important. Your environment is your sanctuary of where you sleep. Number five, again, we're talking about long-term things. These are long-term fixes. These are not just short fixes that you can do to have a little bit of sleep. These are things you implement all of your life for a long period of time. Now, one of these is exercise regularly. Now, I exercise regularly probably every other day. So I at least do three times a week, but I, I try to do every other day. And what's interesting about this is what, when I don't do that, I'm more tired than if I do do that. I know it sounds stupid, 
I get more sleep when I'm regularly exercising because you're taking in gobs of oxygen, pumping it around your body and your immune system and your body and your lungs and your heart are working really, really well. And they get tired enough that they want to rest and they will make your body go to sleep. Now, on the days that I do exercise, I have a better sleep. On the days I don't exercise, I have a worse sleep. So try and implement exercising. It could be walking, it could be weights, it could be running, it could be swimming, it could be absolutely anything, cycling, whatever it is. As long as you're getting oxygen, pumping around your body, you're getting some endorphins going, super, super helpful, and you will definitely benefit from this. Number six is monitoring your caffeine and stimulant intake. A lot of people don't realize that they drink seven cups of coffee a day. Well, if you're drinking seven cups of coffee, that's a heck of a lot of caffeine. That's gonna keep you awake for a very long time. Now, I know, I know, I know. A lot of stimulants actually help with ADHD, help people relax, but a lot of people are very sensitive to stimulants, especially caffeine. So if you regulate what you take or monitor your intake of caffeine, then you'll be able to uh, reduce the impact of it because you'll know, well, I've already had two cups of coffee today. I don't have a problem now. Let's, let's cap it at that. Number seven is something that people don't normally do, and this is every kind of year or so, seek medical advice and treatment for underlying medical conditions that you may not know you have. Maybe you've got sleep apnea, maybe you've got um, insomnia, maybe you've got narcolepsy, you don't know. So going for a regular checkup with your doctor to basically just like a, an all over health check is a really good one because there may be something underlying that you don't really think about because we always think that things are external. Like I watched too much TV, drank too much caffeine, I didn't do any exercise, but maybe there's something else. Maybe you've got like, you know, an underlying health condition that's stopping you from sleeping and simply medication or treatment would actually help um, overcome that very, very simply. So never underestimate anything and take everything I've just said and implement it into your life today. By doing that, you will increase your ability to sleep and you'll thank me so much for this. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment and I will see you in the next video, guys. Peace.